Hi, this is Master Kambai. Welcome to this new replay commentary. Today we got a guest. You can now present yourself. Hi, I'm Fluffy. I've been playing Advance Wars by Web for... I don't know actually. But some people might know me as the Sonya player because I've played 200 Sonya games before I went to Global League. Yeah, you could see the 277 Sonya games up there. <laughs> and... Perfect, I am back. So, sorry about that. What were you saying before we left off? As I was saying, uh, some people might know me as the Sonya player, as I played over 200 Sonya games before I went into Global League. And don't really know what else to say. I just play this game <laughs> and I try to get better with my rating every once in a while. I, I think your quote is kind of amazing because you say, I'm not very strong, but uh, you got like 32 wins and 8 defeat in Global League. That's kind of impressive. So yeah, that either you're, you're joking or you are very humble. And I think it's the very humble case. It's actually uh, one of the Sonya power quotes. Oh, says, really? I didn't yeah. know. <laughs> That's cool. So you played the old school game before Advance Wars by Web. Um, I have, but I was never any good at it. For example, I when I played it as a kid, I never beat the campaign because you know, I was a kid. <laughs> but now that I'm older and I've watched other people play, I've also gotten better myself and decided to take on the competitive games. That's kind of good. Now, before we go over the replay, uh, let's go take a look at the top 5 seal you pick and why. Now, you spoke about Sanja, so I guess we can skip her since you look like someone that actually likes that seal a lot. <laughs> So why Eagle is second? Well, Eagle is similar to Sonya, but not really. It's Eagle is uh, for a lower tier. I would well not lower tier, but for a lower skill level players, Sonya is like a weaker Eagle kind of because people don't know how to fight against Sonya during counter break, but. If you play Sonya enough times, you know the weaknesses. I know how to fight against that Sonya counter break. <laughs> but when I first start, when I first started on this website, I treated Sonya kind of like Eagle in the sense that nobody would attack her, so it's like she's getting, she gets to attack twice. And I guess somehow that just translated to my Eagle plays. That's good. And why Jake? I have no idea. The rest are kind of very similar and I just picked them because I picked them. <laughs> okay, that's very interesting. And why not more Sammy? Sammy is very popular. Why are you not playing her more? I did play her once, but... Uh, well, not once. We could see the number 7 there, <laughs> but only one time I believe I played in Global League. And that's only because it was tier 4 fog where she was allowed. Oh, uh, I see. Oh wait, I have played Sammy a second time. <laughs> that's good. And then I realized how vulnerable mech, uh, mech spamming was. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> we all get to that point at some point. <laughs> yeah. I had a max come like one shotting all my mechs, like plowing through my entire line, and I was like, "What? How am I supposed to fight back against this? I might as well just pick Max for tier two. <laughs> it, it was that kind of feeling. <laughs> Very funny. So uh, now to go back to the game, uh, how do you feel about that map? I think I've played it once before, actually. Really. I, it, it was my first time, and I kind of liked the idea, and I think Lash in Tier 3 is kind of broken. That's why I picked her in another game I plan on doing with someone else, to see if I'm mm -hmm. right. But I think Lash is really broken in that map. Uh, yeah, so, did you enjoy it? Is I the did. map you would recommend? 
Uh, it's certainly different from the other maps in the sense that the types of unit you want to build is will be different because air power is is very important in this. I would say they can move like there's so many rivers here that slows down your land units, which is why I only built one medium tank for that game. <laughs> And yet, one year tank. I remember seeing a year tank. I think, I think. Uh, it never happened. It was just a medium tank. Oh, well, so that medium tank was really deadly then. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, I see that. That's a good explanation. Um, oh, that's a bomber. I remember seeing. Uh, why Javier? Um, to be honest, I'm not very good at tier one, and. I just pick Javier because I have Com Tower. Um, well, I think I would get the Com Tower anyway. <laughs> Against Bomb Bolt, I could use my power more often and take advantage of that to to rush ahead. Uh, against Hawk, don't really know how it will go, but I assume I will also try to rush. Yeah. yeah. Against Sasha, well. I had a sneaking suspicion you would pick Sasha, <laughs> and the other tier one CEOs have too large of a power to, well, not too large of a power. I can still use them eventually, but Javier doesn't really suffer the penalties from market crash as badly as the other CEOs would. Yeah. So that's why I picked Javier. I, that's that would be my primary reason, since I don't know what else. I'm not really good on picking tier one CEOs. That's good. I picked Sasha because I want to main her, and she is hands down my favorite tier 1 seal. She's just the most fun to play. And not just because of Market Crash, but because of her day to day. She's like a nerf Colin. And if Colin wasn't that broken, Colin would be my favorite seal, but he is broken, so he, he's not. But you know what I mean, right? Yeah, <laughs> she, I know what you mean. She, she's I like Dollar Store Colin. <laughs> <laughs> she is. I, I try when I play her. I try teching up as quickly as possible to take advantage of all that money I have. So uh, we will see further in this game. I think my Sasha improved a lot. Now, as matchup goes, um, I think Sasha versus Javier. It's kind of bad for Sasha. The longer the game will be, because uh, I cannot stop your power anymore at some point. And your super is just better than mine. So I think short term I need to really get a huge advantage. And if I don't, then I lost. And uh, yeah, I think that's an interesting matchup. Uh, now, if we speak about other matchups versus Sasha, like Grit, I think it's the most balanced matchup I can have. Sasha versus Grit. Because... Grit is just a bit weaker than Javier, in my own opinion. He's like dollar store Javier. <laughs> so um, I think like how oh, it would go like early in the game, Sasha have a small lead, but the longer the game will be, the stronger Grit becomes. So I think like Javier and like Grit are like the the weakest seals in tier one. With Sasha, of course, because Sasha, the only reason why she is there in tier 1, it's because she can deny basically everyone else super below tier 1. And the day-to-day -day below tier 1 are just not as good. And that's why she's that high, but she's like in the low end of tier 1, because even the two weakest tier 1 are just better than her. And I know that by experience. Even if I'm not really good at the game, I played a lot. Uh, I have much more games than that like my just my casual account has as like almost 800 games and my my many uh alternate account for global league some are at 500 400 others are like at 100 so i played thousands and thousands of games even if i suck i still have under a uh, good understanding and good experience I know the game well, uh, even if I'm really bad at executing what I know, I know the game well. Um, now, Von Bolt is a very interesting one, he is basically a better Javier, because he really doesn't need 
any super to be good. And if you take away Javier's super, Javier is underwhelming. But if you take away, like, Von Bolt's super, Von Bolt doesn't really care because that's not his super his strength. It's really his natural strength being better offense, better defense. With the tower, he's even more deadly and more dangerous. And he doesn't even need a tower, like... The Nihemis Tower, he doesn't care, will still roll on you, like, in a clap of a finger. Well, the thing about Javier is, Javier can... It's, it's more of Javier using his normal power. Normal power only costs three stars, and you can use at least two of those before Vambo gets one super. Yeah. And that's why I, I think Javier is... I would pick Javier over Vambo, assuming I can get a calm tower. Yeah, but that's the thing with Javier, you can deny his strength. Yeah, that's, that's why tough. he is a bit weaker than Von Bolt. But if it's a Von Bolt versus Javier and you are sure to get your tower, I think Javier has a very small window. He is a bit better because he has more option and he will be much more aggressive in the early stage of the game. But super wise, like. X Makina is just better, even if I don't want to like say it's bad Javier Super, but it's it's six stars against ten, so it's normal there's some kind of power creep there. <laughs> now as of Sturm, I think in this map, because of all these rivers, he should be banned from tier one. And even there in general, I I hate that Sturm is considered one in some fog map. It makes no sense for me. Defense is just crazy and he can like just roll on terrain like nothing. That's a joke. Like Sturm should really like either he get normal stats and he only get as a day-to-day -day, like doesn't care about terrain. Now it would be more fair. But the Sturm we got right now is basically a monster because Star stacks up with defense. Like, his whole game is, I I just have a very strong early game. And his super is not that amazing. Like, it, it's a good super. It's 10 stars, but it's 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 easy to control. So, Sturm Strength is not a super. Even if his super works well, Sasha just deny that super. And uh, if, if it's Sasha versus Sturm... Sturm can still win despite not using Meteor Strike because his day to day is just that good. I now, mean, Sturm could still use the normal power, probably. Yeah, the normal power, it's a, yeah, for sure, at some point he will use it, but even, even with it or whiteout it, it doesn't matter because he still has that really strong uh, day to day. Uh, I, I remember winning a lot of games as Sturm against better player than me just because I'm Sturm. And yeah, I, I got the, these are like really old replays because these are the days I just stopped playing Sturm because I'm like, I made my point, Sturm is broken, uh, he should not be part of Global League, yet he's still around, so I'm like, I will play seals that are actually fun to play. <laughs> um... Von, uh, Von Bolt uh, taking on. So now the last one is Ock. Ock, it's a really good seal, but I think he's overrated. Uh, he has good stats, don't get me wrong. And his super is the best super in the game. But it's 9 stars, so it's very slow. And Sasha versus Ock, if Sasha is able to control the game well enough, you will never see a Black Storm. Maybe Black Wave by day like 20, 30. But even there, it's really hard. But even there, Ock, even if he doesn't have his power or super because of his day to day, he can still compete with Sasha by pressuring Sasha building. Because Sasha Wall Ting is as long as she has more building than her opponent, she will be better than her opponent. Even if they have better stats, you will have better economy. But here's the thing with Sasha, her biggest weakness is the buildings. If if you are equal to your opponent in terms of income, you lost. Because Sasha thing is the advantage she get from the money she gets. So Ak is if if he's if he is smart, 
it will basically trend in buildings and it will force Sashine to responding and because Ankh has better units, it will be able to just counterattack really hard on Sasha. So I think that matchup is very interesting. Even if he doesn't have that many Black Storm, all depends on both players. Uh, it can go either way as long as both players know what they are doing. Uh, I, I don't think there's a clear advantage there. But Ankh as a CO is much easier to play than Sasha because he's just a push button and he has a guaranteed day to day. Um, I, from my experience, and I only have one Hawk versus Sasha I, that I've ever played. I just stalled the game out. Like we hit unit cap, and I just kept stalling and stalling until I I just waited until I got an opportunity to like do enough damage that I get my power. So I we were just st we were like shifting one tile forward and back depending on our position. If I found it advantageous to shift forward, I will go forward one tile. If I found it to be a weakness, I would go backwards one tile. I think I have the replay saved in my PC somewhere. But uh, for Hawk against Sasha, you really just have to hold on long enough till you get your power. Then after that, you can pretty much win against Sasha. It depends. Uh, uh, it depends. Yes, it's kind of bad if Black Wave happened and Sasha just ate it. Uh, but I won a few games where uh, I've seen one or two Black Waves because I had already a really big advantage before Black Wave. Uh, but yeah, I, I understand. Like, as I said, uh, as long as you get that lead, you should be fine. But the moment that lead collapse, there's no coming back for you. I see. So uh, now you have control. So we go at your speed for this replay. All right, I'm going to skip your entire first turn. That's good. <laughs> I mean, not much really to say about it. We just go for our neutral properties, normal capture phase stuff. Yeah. So you went for the port, I went for it too. It's a turn one capture. Yeah. And... I believe this turn is where we differed a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you used your... I'm going to call this your... I don't know, what, what do you want to call this base? I don't know. Uh, the upper base. <laughs> sure. Your upper base... Your I'll call it your outermost base. Your outermost base, you sent the infantry to get the airport. What I did was I used my infantry from the base at the top side yeah. to walk across the river to my airport and then sent my outermost base to the property under underneath it. Yeah. The reason I went for this capture instead of... Well, actually, it's, it's probably because of the extra infantry that I start with because I'm player two. Yeah. But I realized I rather have this my next infantry here to take two turns to walk to this property instead of taking three turns to walk to the one further ahead. So oh so I guess the difference is because of my extra infantry doing its own thing somewhere else, I can send this in I I just want to capture as quickly as possible. Yeah. I think so I guess that, uh, my, my take on that is I'm Sasha and early in the game uh, it's essential for me to have a good unit count because this is the best way to benefit from that day to day I got because I got better economy than you. I will be able to like pop two recon in a row while I'll base skipping and this is the charm of Sasha so that's why uh, here I went for the airport unit count the faster i get the airport the better i will be because i will have the option to make air unit on top of the ground unit i already have mm -hmm. yeah i can agree to that i was expecting a lot of air units from you to be honest yeah that's also air why i toned it down a bit and i started building in them a bit later in the game but early stage in the game i my focus was on 
round unit because I was like, uh, that person just have seen my uh, stream against Advanced Warrior, so that person will expect like some some air plays. <laughs> well, to be fair, this place uh, due to the rivers and stuff in the forest. I was expecting air even I would expect air from any opponent simply because they don't have to spend the time walking around like like driving around the river going through the forest they could just fly straight up or straight to the right and reach the front line in two turns whereas it might take three four turns for a vehicle to reach the front line yeah okay I'm going to see how you capture So you moved your block book to capture this property. Yep. It's a little different from where I moved my black boat, and I see you built a second recon. Very aggressive uh, start, and I'm like, I've seen many Javier doing cheese and trying to get both tower. So I was like, <laughs> these recon will make sure this won't happen yet. Well, as someone who plays a lot of Sonya and a lot of Eagle, I'm actually a rather passive player. <laughs> so, I send my infantry down here because I expect this one to be able to walk down to this property. So I will get it anyway. I might as well go for one that's further away. That's that, that good was my thinking. Reasoning. I like it. And that's funny because that show uh, where you sent your black belt at, I actually realized it existed by the end of the game. Of course, I've seen it, just like you, but I never really thought about going there for like 90% of the game. And at some point I realized, oh, there's a shell by that mountain. Let's use that shell by the mountain. <laughs> yeah, you can also just drop off some an infantry on the mountain and get all the vision you need. Yeah. Well, not all the vision, but good enough for defending your HQ, I would say. So, I believe I built a transport copter. Yes, I did. Why a transport copter? I simply wanted to... Like, you're Sasha, you get 10% more income. I want to get, make sure I don't fall too much behind in value. So I wanted to capture as many properties as quickly as possible. I like uh, that and... response. That's actually really smart. <laughs> Yeah, besides, once I get to this airport, I can start pumping out a lot of planes. So even if you are ahead in the vehicle game, my zone of control here it will be much it's much easier for me to control this my comm tower than it is for you to try to fight for my comm tower. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why I never bothered trying to take your comm tower <laughs> because once you get your airport here, it will be very hard for me to capture this. Yeah. And that transport paid itself back many times over. <laughs> That's good. That That's say. what we want. I actually used that shell much earlier than what I remembered. I actually forgot that I used that shell at that point in the game. I thought I used that shell for the first time like day 20. <laughs> All right. I see you built your first tank. Yeah. Because uh, money. <laughs> Yes. I believe I built, I go with the artillery opening instead of a tank. Why? Well, the reason is artillery is slower than tanks. So if I built an artillery first and then a tank after, they will typically reach the front line at the same time due to the movement difference. Perfect, we are back. Okay, welcome back. Thank you. So, <laughs> as I was saying, I believe I built an artillery this round. Uh, there it is. So, my reasoning for this artillery was, if I built an artillery first this round, and then a tank next round, they would typically, I think they would arrive around the same time for my comm tower. 
A single tank won't be able to defend it if you're trying to rush it, especially when a battlecopter comes in. I am still expecting a battlecopter. <laughs> so I thought I might as well get half more units arrive at the same time. And then after a tank, if I am building a tank, if I do decide to build a tank, I can go with a battlecopter next, and all three of them can arrive around the same time. So that was my reasoning to build it in this order. That's really also... interesting. That mech, man. I, I, I had that question the entire game. Why so many mechs? Why this mech? <laughs> well, uh, I find it very difficult to get vehicles across this river right here. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I am aware of a possibility of an HQ cap attempt. Yeah. Uh, supported by vehicles, so I thought, you know, mechs can go can't go very fast on their own. But I got a pre-built black boat, so it's free transportation. <laughs> My mechs will be at the front line very quickly, and if you try sending vehicles, I will get very cost-efficient engagements. Yeah. Right, because I don't want the fight to be here. The I wanted the most of the fighting to be up here, where I have my airport very close. Yeah. So I want to make it difficult for you to... Like, I just want to deter you from making the battles on my HQ side. Yeah. That's interesting. And I Except see your playstyle. Like, the artery playstyle is a very slow playstyle but at some point it will pay off and it will be really strong and that's interesting to see it like i see it being reflected on your seal pigs like sunjai like you said and eagle so now i will think more about making artery when i play these two <laughs> i did say i'm more of a passive or defensive defensive player yeah so, great use of the transport copter, by the way. Yeah. Just so I can like get there one turn faster, but then I can also pick up an infantry the next turn and start going towards my comp tower. And that's funny. Uh, I also thought about the transport opening, but I was really scared of the tower cheese. That's the thing that really made me make so many recons. Yeah, but recons are also good for vision, so I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a bad play. Yeah. So you built a s second you know, tank. tank. Yeah, second tank. I I had the money, and I knew if this time around I had a, a bit more money than what I should spend, I would have enough for a battlecopter entry infantry, and. As you can see it, that's Sasha day to day coming into play. Question, why this base specifically? Actually, I don't know. I Oh, well, I actually know. Uh, that base, yeah. So I can have two infantry inside the black boat. Okay. I suppose there isn't too much of a difference between these two. Yeah. And I actually thought, I, th I think this tank will go in the upper part of the map. I think I sent most of my troops in the upper part of the map. And I yeah. started sending in the bottom because I was losing the top part. You really wanted to stop me from getting my comm tower. <laughs> yeah, I was really scared because I knew you were a better player than me. So I was like, maybe I can cheese that tower as long as I can. <laughs> Oh, another reason for my infantry going for th my first infantry sent down going for this property. Uh, I noticed if I send two more later, the two more can go for these two, and this infantry can have a pretty nice movement onto this one. Yeah. Your recon does interrupt it though, but just my reasoning for this. <laughs> okay. Just, uh,. Finishing my captures. I send it in the forest. Uh. I would build more mechs, but I wanted two recons, so I couldn't afford another mech. 
That's a good thing for me. <laughs> okay, let's see. Hmm. Speaking of battle copters, uh, I think I built more anti-air than all my variations of tanks like more than all tanks and medium tanks combined this game me too i think that was an entire fest at some point because i realized how many air unit you were making and i was like <laughs> ego I, player yeah <laughs> i was like man i think there's no tier two in this map if there's one ego rocks <laughs> And I considered I would have considered picking Eagle even if I knew you were picking Sasha, because I know I can stall for a long, long time. I'm going to day fifty if it's necessary to get my lightning strike, but I'm going to get it eventually. <laughs> it will like stuff to get it. Yeah, I, like I will build so many battle copters and then throw them at your anti-air in one turn so that I could just charge them up very quickly. Oh, I guess I never built a tank to follow up the artillery. Eh, Battlecopter is just as good. It will arrive at a similar time. Actually, uh, a li so something I would like to say. I considered setting this infantry here to begin capping the comm tower. <laughs> but uh, I sensed a disturbance in the force. And uh, they were... <laughs> Property. <laughs> I mean, I, I know I don't have the tank to punish a recon, so I have. So I decided to go for the income instead. That's good. This map, oh, I, I have seen it based on our game. It's not a conventional map. Usually, I make anti-air really early in my games. Because I don't like surprise copters, but I feel like in this map, you just want to, like, spam copters. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to walk around all those rivers or forests. Yeah, but I didn't do it because I, I expected you to do it. And I was like, I need something else you don't have. And yeah, that, that, that was my thought process. So early in the game, I have a few copters. But I was like, if we just do a full-on war, copters on copters, I will lose. My copters are nowhere near as good as yours. And mine are cheaper for sure, but they are not as good. And now we see right now your copter is really paying off. And it's a really good copter. Because your capture game is better than mine. Uh, like, my small... Yeah. Yeah. Even with your adjusted income, it's still lower. Yeah. So that, that transport was a really good idea. So I was kind of... I knew you probably wouldn't do it, but I was kind of hoping you would kill this infantry and I would have a mech waiting for it. <laughs> I, I don't do that kind of stuff because Raycons, I see them as intel gathering and they are really easy to punish. And I don't see them as that tool to really kill stuff. They are there to like deny some caps, and protect some building, and if you really are greedy and you really try to kill off stuff, your recon will die. Because they are really easy to kill. Like mechs, tanks, other recon, even if recon on recon is kind of bad. Uh, Sometimes like your recon has nothing else to do, so let's do it. So yeah, I, 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 I don't go after other unit because I feel like going after other unit with recons it feels like especially early in the game feels like a 700 to play like <laughs> it's not really good I mean recons can typically survive one tank shot so a 1 HP recon can still provide vision yeah but it's still not really great like I, I see a lot of like me. I am my most of my account. If I if I average them, I am roughly 900, 950. 
Uh, the highest I went was 1,000, but I, I think if I average all my account, I am in between nine and 900 and 950. So I fought many 700, many 800, and my eyes are bleeding when I see them just sacking their recon because they're like, ha, 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 I didn't like you, you're building, but then poof, no more recon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I still get that in my in my games of of 1150-ish right now. Well, I think I'm it's actually... very meta to be like overly aggressive. And sometimes it will pay off well, depending on your seal, but... To be fair, I am playing Eagle, so I guess that's where the hyper-aggression came from. Oh yeah, th that makes sense now. <laughs> Since you're playing Eagle, I fully understand yeah. that. <laughs> I even played Eagle in Tier 1 against Pondo. That's the thing with Tier 2. Um, Olaf and Eagle, I do think they, they can hold their own in Tier 1. Yeah, to some degree, yes. I, I don't think Max stand top. any chance because I think Max is trash and he's not even a fun CO to play, but I do think Eagle and Olaf can stand their ground there. Alright, so I see your <laughs> Battlecopter and tank here, and I was like, alright, I bluffed my way to victory before, I'm going in, and I immediately just like started <laughs> going in for my comp tower, move my artillery in, I mean like, yeah. Just like no hesitation, just go in, get the kill, start capping the comm tower just to try to scare you off. Like demoralize <laughs> your enemy there. So, so we the two of us played this like a live game and yeah. I just went move, click, 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 attack, 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 kill recon, begin capping and And that's I, funny because I didn't thought we would because I was waiting for one of my friends to just jumping into the stream we had planned. And it finally like ended up jumping in like two hour and a half later, so I, we had enough time to like go over this entire game, and I was kind of happy about that. I wasn't sure if that would work, but it worked. Yeah. All right. So you attack with the tank first. I was so pissed. I was like, if I'm any other seal in freaking tier one, that thing is gone. <laughs> it would be. But, like I said, Recons can survive, can typically survive one tank shot. <laughs> so you actually interrupted your cap here, I agree with that. I really I wanted that infantry gone. <laughs> and that recon. <laughs> yeah, I believe in unit, value, uh, unit count over unit value, which is why I spammed a lot of Battlecopters, because it doesn't take a base turn. Yeah. But it's also... Uh, I did base skip quite a lot in this game. And now I knew I would take some artery shots, but I was like, I'd rather delay your really strong day-to-day -day as much as I can, because the moment you get your day-to-day -day is the moment where it will be very hard for me to like just go through your troops, because you're as good as Vumble, or a bit weaker, I should say. You now, built two medium tanks. Yeah. Uh, now, the first reason is you have seen my previous stream with Advanced Warrior. So mm -hmm. I was like, I was expecting fighters and anti airs. So I was like, I will go in the take up road. Maybe my opponent will not expect it. And uh, to be fair, I actually, well, I, I actually expected heavy vehicles. Yeah. That's why, that's why I spammed Battlecopters, because they can <laughs> fight uh, any tanks pretty well, and they're cheaper than most of the expensive tanks. Yeah. So, uh, which is also why I didn't bother building heavy tanks of my own. I felt that they would be too expensive against Sasha. I'd yeah. rather just go with a Battlecopter or a bomber where I won't be hit back. Yeah. That's also, the thing with all other seals in tier 1, they all have better unit than Sasha. That's why she's kind of weak. Uh, typically, uh, typically people would preserve their... I'm going to go off on a point that will come up later, but typically people would save their anti-air to shoot a battlecopter. In this game, because I decided that air power would be the most important thing, I kind of swapped the roles a little bit, and I tried to hide my tanks 
from your stuff <laughs> and only push them out against anti-air because I was going for the battlecopter heavy route. Yeah. So like typically you save your anti-air until a battlecopter come. In this game, I tried to save my tank until uh, anti-air came forward. We will see that a little bit, uh, quite a, a lot later. I can't believe that guy survived. I think he low rolled twice. My infantry should have died. Well, I still don't have my comm tower. Even white all it. That's too low roll. I protect my artillery. <laughs> At that point, I was like, oh my, I cannot make a scratch on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was kind of pissed. <laughs> I was like, no, why can't I scratch it? I'm telling you, transport copters will pay itself back. <laughs> and, and not just in the capture game. I really wanted to preserve that transport copter throughout the entire yeah. game, but I used it to... Uh, you know, I'll just let the game show it later. <laughs> I like transport a lot, um, and they, they are fun. Um, I am currently playing a game, Sasha vs. Ock, and I got the upper end right now just because I made that very good APC early in the game. My economy went in the roof really fast because of that APC, so yeah, I, I, I know how valuable the transports are. Mm -hmm. uh. Any reason why you chose to attack the 2 HP battlecopter with a 9 to HP To clear that tower, first of all, and second, mm -hmm. unit count. And third, I didn't know what you had else. Yeah, I thought I would maybe kill it. <laughs> well, if I did get a low roll last time, your infantry would be like at 0 0.1, 0 0.2 HP. But maybe, maybe, since I have first strike, maybe I would kill yours. Maybe. I was originally gonna send this recon down, but I realized it probably wouldn't do anything down there, so I kept it in this forest. So, so usually I tell people don't use uh, Market Crash against uh, the power of Javier or Grit, because it's mm -hmm. a 3 star power. But here, I knew you were better than me, and here, I was kind of scared of what kind of stuff you would pull off if I don't deny you that first power. So, I denied it. <laughs> well, my first power wouldn't, wouldn't really do anything, because all it does is doubles the effects of my comm tower. Yeah. Along with the vanilla plus 10% attack and defense. So I was actually confused here because I wouldn't gain anything from using my normal power. Stat buff, and I will go further with this. Uh, to deny 5 stars, you need 27k. And my income mm -hmm. was 25, and usually I spend most of my money, and I also got repairs. So with 22, I was sure I would delete all of your stars, and I would delay your super. Uh, I, I was actually scared of your super, or even you getting near your super. I was like, I, I will reset our matters for now. That was my thought process, because you don't just, like, deny something. You reset the matters. And that was the purpose of that, because I knew I didn't add the fun to completely shut down your bar. So I did shut it down as much as I could with the money I had. I think it would have. I think you should have saved your power until it was clear that I would get my comm tower. Because I would never use my power until I get a comm tower. It would be yeah. a waste for me. And if you did save it, you would. You might be able to get your power twice in a row since you already charged it to six stars, probably by then. But if I if I got it charged to six stars, you would have six stars as well. And to well, shut down six stars, it costs more money, which I don't have. <laughs> yeah, but you could, but you could use it twice in a row, and you would. It's safe to assume I wouldn't use it until I got my comm tower. Yeah. So as soon as you see that I'm getting my comm tower, that's when you could use your power, then use it again next turn to completely remove my bar. Yeah. Oh. 
I think these medium tanks are the reason why I was able to turn it around up here, actually. I was kind of shocked when one of them went poof. I was like, no, my toys. They were it's meant for greater of, things. It was more of uh, these medium tanks are a little slow, and that allowed that uh, the time it takes for it to get up here is what allowed me to secure my comm tower, I believe. Yeah. But even any know, other unit, it's pretty far away, so... Even if that were tanks, don't see them reaching that field fast. Huh. You will see I will mostly just use light tanks <coughs> and anti-air for the bulk of my army. Yeah. Okay. So... Gets a battlecopter and... Oh, that was a low roll. Hmm, I don't... I'm not sure about that, actually. So my vehicles are arriving now. And... That was... Uh, you had so many low roll this game. My infantry should have died. <laughs> Uh, I don't actually think it's a low row. I mean, you were on a three-star terrain there. But down in the forest with your eight HP. Yeah, but also... I still don't have my comm tower, so I'm not exactly doing more damage or anything. Yeah. Infantry are easy to kill, that's the thing. So even if you don't have your tower yet, Infantry are still pretty weak. Yeah, uh, I, I felt that quite a bit when I played Days of Ruin. <laughs> Days of Ruin, the balance is different. It's much I know, different. But infantry feels so much weaker there than it is over here. Yeah. Because there are too many choices. There are so many units you can pick. Mm -hmm. Alright. So... I'm fine with you interrupting my comm tower, actually. Uh, I realized if you keep trying to interrupt it, I'm just going to keep getting shots off my artillery. Yeah. And I do value unit counts. I am... Uh, it's your turn right now, but yeah. I am currently four units ahead. Because you I have built to two right now. Yeah. Yeah. Another, re another reason I like Battlecopters, aside from their mobility on this map, is that they don't take up a base turn. Yeah. But as I said, I did base skip quite a few, so I suppose that doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> but you're better than me, so that's fine, base skipping like that. Yeah. I just wanted units on this airport as quickly as possible <laughs> so I can get my comm tower. So at that point in the motion in the bottom, I was starting to place my units in range of your buildings. Because I knew at some point I would collapse in the top part because you had your airport nearby. So I was like, I need a, a like a contingency plan in the bottom so maybe I can like get a small lead a bit longer so maybe I can turn the table. And now I built a new tank because I knew if I would go full on copters, um, I would lose. You got better copters than me because you will get that tower in maybe two or three turns. So that's the reason, but looking back at the game, maybe I should have went for fighter because I didn't realize how valuable the Air Force was. I knew they were good because when there's two airport, Air Force are always really strong, but I didn't really realize at the fullest how strong they were. I, I just like uh, unit count, so I built them. <laughs> Monkey brain here. Yeah, well, that's that's a good thing in this map. Mm -hmm. So, just putting my mech in a position <laughs> such that it can support these three in case of a vehicle attack. But I knew once you get your uh, battle copters over here, there's nothing these foot soldiers can do. Yeah. More mechs. <laughs> yep, yeah, more mechs. And I built a fighter. Interesting. I 
I still believe I actually base skip for the fighter. <laughs> and like, you know, one base, one airport. Eh, I'm not losing unit count. I suppose it's fine. <laughs> I just really wanted, like, I know the power of air units, so I decided I wanted to claim air superiority as soon as possible. <laughs> That was a freaking eye roll this time around. Now I resigned. I knew you would get that tower, so I just take away what I can take away. Well, it's good to retreat when you know if you lost. Some people just keep fighting and then they end up losing more. That's why there are 700. <laughs> or 800. I would say, yeah. <laughs> but I still make the mistake of overextending myself sometimes. Sometimes you win by overextending. That's ironic. Oh. Because most of the time you will lose because of that. But sometimes it's just happened to work and you win. Eh, my infantry got trapped here. That was the plan, right? You knew there was something there, right? Well, uh, to be honest, no, but if there was, I could still deal with it. Yeah. I was really just trying to scout out this city for my infantry up here. At that point, I was really scared for my building, because I knew I had an infantry in range, and I'm, I'm like, if that person takes one of my building, I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you would be behind on the property count. <laughs> yeah. At least until you start attacking here. But uh, as I said earlier, I wanted to make this push as soon as possible because I want the fighting to be as close to my airport as possible yeah. and away from your airport. Which is why I... Well, I wouldn't say I'm overly aggressive. I, I didn't actually go for it because I couldn't capture. Yeah. But I was preparing to. Eh. I was expecting an attack eventually, and I thought I might as well like put make make the battles on my turf. Like let my opponent overextend trying to take these properties, rather than me trying to hold them and giving you first strike. Because now that I got the comm tower, uh, two infantry against an infantry capping my property, it's about a 50-50 chance that I kill it off. I would say. Yeah. And that's the reason for my retreat to the, you know, just not be on the front lines. I don't have to. That sounds good. Now, I don't know what I was trying to do. I was really scared you would pressure a lot of my building. So I'm like, if I can dent one of your infantry, I will be happy about that. And now I'm like, I won't take any other engagement, so let's just market crash that matter. And usually I don't deny too much uh, that power, as I said, but I was really scared for my building, and I knew if, if you would pop your power, you would take the chance to like steal one of my building, and there's no way I could get it back after that. Well, I when I capture buildings, I don't capture them to try to capture them. I captured them to get my opponent to commit forces there where yeah. my units in the back can come in and destroy them. Yeah. But just for the... I prefer killing units over capturing properties. That's always if I kill, better. If I kill the units, then these properties will be mine anyway. Yeah. So. Now is the turn I realized all good air unit where <laughs> to capture <laughs> three infantry. <laughs> So, uh, I, I wanted to see what was ahead, but I didn't want to throw away my recon because I was smart. I planned to use my recon for a counter attack from your attack. <laughs> so I decided to throw away my lowest HP battle copter. Yeah. And just just prepare a big force here waiting to strike against your impending attack.
I also put my artillery in the front. Uh, I typically, well, I would defend my artillery most of the time, but sometimes I think if my opponent is wasting time shooting at my artillery, I will get first strike on them with my other stuff. Yeah. And I also realized there's a lack of infantry on this side right now, so I started shifting these to the left. That's kind of I don't good. need more. I don't need more infantry down here. I already have enough. <laughs> you got the sea of infantry. More mechs because you don't have enough mechs. <laughs> and more fighters because clearly I can, I'm not winning the air war right now. I need more fighters to win it. I originally planned for this fighter to go down in case of a battlecopter because I know my infantry can't support it. Yeah. But then I saw a medium tanks here and I thought, you're focusing everything up here, going to send it left instead. So, uh, you killed my battlecopter as expected and you shot my artillery. I was proud of this one. I was like, Hell yeah, that artillery, I got my shot at it. <laughs> and then what do you think after moving this tank here and seeing all of this? I, I was like, oh man, I'm doomed. I lost that front, but hey, let's keep trying. And I did that because I like to finish off units, and I didn't know if you had other units to reinforce the gap. And if you did, and if you stole one of my building, I would be in a really bad spot. Because as I said earlier, or... If I didn't, I will say it now. Uh, Sasha is good as long as you got more money than your opponent. The moment you fall behind in terms of economy is the moment you lost a game as Sasha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I actually played against Mangs a few times. Oh, one time I did play as Sasha versus Javier. I was the Sasha, and I just could not keep up against Javier. The units yeah. are just stronger than mine, and I lost the property lead very quickly. Yeah. From then on, it was just a slow grind until eventually I decided it was impossible to turn it around. Yeah. That's so, why you need to keep track of your building and your open end building. That's why you need always plan to like snatch away building. And I will explain a bit this turn I had. I moved a lot of units because I had no clue what you had there. I, I have seen the bits of it with that recon, but I knew you had more. I just didn't have the vision for it. And I was like, I will make a huge hostile takeover in this area. But I need a lot of infantry to like join caps and like shield my own people. So that's why peop like I had a lot of units stacking up. Because I was like, okay, in the upper part, I got most of my vehicles. To like all my buildings but here apparently my opponent has not that many vehicles because I have seen so many of them there I'm like there's no vehicles there but I don't want to waste infantries on other infantries because I, I I didn't know you had that many units even when I tried to like steal your buildings uh, I didn't know how many units you had so that was like a safe play until I felt confident enough I could like maybe do some hostile takeover there. It's one of the reasons why I moved my infantry back to begin with. I didn't want you to see how much I had. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this was a 3 HP anti-air which I healed up. <laughs> That's why you, you need to finish off stuff when you can. Yes, it's not dead until it's dead. Yeah. I used my transport copter to scout into this forest in case anything was there. OP transport. It doesn't carry any more unit, but it does yeah. scout forest. What are you going to do? Shoot at it? You got better <laughs> stuff to shoot at. Uh, so your anti-air was here. Yeah. The replay just poofed it. I was so sad now. when he killed it. I was like, oh no. I think it's time yeah. I'm thinking about fighter. <laughs> But I was and like, you already have a fighter right now, and I don't see any bomber. So I was like, I don't know if it's the right time for a fighter, but I did consider a fighter this turn. Death from above. 
I kind of like the arch I made here. Yeah. I don't have another battle copter up here to finish it, but let's pretend it's there. And I thought I know you're going to shoot at stuff here, but as long as my tank is a lot is alive, then I will be fine since my battle copter can deal with these medium tanks. Yeah. More mechs. Like I said, your medium tanks are here. I thought you were focusing everything here, so I sent another fighter. <laughs> and the bomber. And I, the bomber yeah. was built. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you look at my funds right now, I double base skip for it. <laughs> wow. I'd say it's worth... I mean, I look at my KD. It's about the same, but I lost... But I lost quite a bit of battle coppers, which don't take base turns. Yeah. So from that information, I assumed I would be ahead in the unit count, which I was. Yeah. That's why I thought it's okay for me to base skip for a bomber. Yeah. And I probably could have used this sooner. But... Uh, <laughs> I know you will attack with your medium tanks. <laughs> Or at least I was hoping you would, so I might as well make it difficult for you to do so. Yeah. They just don't die. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm actually surprised you went for the anti-air instead of my tank here. Uh, no, I was like... I, I want to force you into using your fighter on my copter. And I didn't know you had that second anti-air, that's why I finished off the anti-air. And I also did that because unit count, as you said earlier. I knew if I would go on that tank, I would never finish it off because of your power. So I was like, let's affect the unit count here and now. Alright, that's fair enough. I was survive so pissed when you tower. survived, but I was like, it's normal, it's Javier, this unit don't die. <laughs> now, at that point, I was like, you know, my worst nightmare just arrived. Yeah. Two mechs yep. <laughs> side by side. <laughs> yep, in range of your recon. <laughs> yeah. And now, because I realized that recon was gone, I decided to launch the big asshole in the bottom part. I'm like, this is the desperate turn where I will try to flip the table. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, you still got the battle copter, which I can't shoot down. Since I moved my fighter left instead of down. Yeah. But I could have shut this holding down if I just... Uh, could have. I'll keep that in mind next time. <laughs> So you're building a lot of anti-air. <laughs> because I, I realize you like so much your copters, and I don't want I to base skip because at that point I knew you had a better unit count. So I'm like, I cannot base skip. If I base skip, the unit count will just get worse for me. So yeah. So I was expecting your recon to survive a shot from the mech. That's why <laughs> I uh, sent my infantry against the recon to soften it first. <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure I, it, it, make, just to make sure I get rid of your vision. Poor guy, man. He was just hired to do one job and he died. Battle oh, this attacks. is the turn where my army collapsed. <laughs> and I put my tank attack to attack from the furthest <laughs> sides to keep it safe. Oh my, that was a really strong turn for you. Yeah, uh, your medium tank is also on a road here, just like this one was on the shoal, so I thought it was easy pickings. Yeah. I didn't want to reveal my bomber because it could not reach the Neo tank just yet, <laughs> yeah. but I was planning to use it on the Neo tank. Now you front shift your fighter because you realize you have nothing against my air unit on the bottom, that's smart. <laughs> Well, I also just wanted to, I, I made sure your recon could see, well, you could see it anyway, but I wanted to put in your head that my fighter was moving down to try to scare you off from here, because I did not want the fight to shift here. 
I also did this because I thought it was fun. When you did that, I was like, that gives me PTSD from Advanced Warrior. He liked to do that. Why? <laughs> I mean, I like to do that too. I trapped a mega tank <laughs> once like that. You see, guys, this is why we don't build that kind of stuff. <laughs> no mega tank, please. So I I would I would probably lose these cities, but I could try to hurt as many infantry as I can to slow down your capture. That was my plan here, really. And I need more max, of course. Now, this is the turn where I decide to use Warbond because I realize I have no good economy and I realize I may have a few spare box and I may have more units and I may maybe come back in the race by using Warbond. It is a little... It's a kind of a double-edged sword though <laughs> because the more value you get from it the more power I get from it. Yeah. And that's the scary thing about using Warbond. I was fine with losing the anti-air. I have another one. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I don't have to put my fighters at risk, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> So I even built another one over here. I think I sent this one down, actually. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't actually know why you joint capped here. Uh, I wanted to make sure I finished that cap, and I wasn't yes. sure what you had around. So I was, Fair enough. I was really scared, and I really needed that building because... As I said earlier, uh, the moment Sasha is lacking the money is the moment he lost. And I also didn't know what you had there. So I was really scared you had something to cap this building. And yeah, I was really scared by that. So I was like, I want to secure these two buildings because I feel like my buildings here will collapse soon because you clearly win that front. So that's also why I started shifting troops there, because I realized here it was lost. I still sent a few anti-air to like buy some time and like hold the line as we say, but uh, I, I knew my only option was to front shift and try something there. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. You, sh you should have been trying to attack this way sooner. Yeah. I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the games kind of reached to a double HQ rush. Like I wouldn't be surprised if that was a thing on this map. Yeah. Just because of the airports being so close to your opponent's HQ. So because of Warbond, I I'm able to pump a lot of good stuff. Like one in tier, one Nia Tang, even if Nia Tang are not really impressive and even there I had no clue you had that bomber, so in my mind that that new thing would take value and be good. <laughs> but I, I should have built like more air forces looking back. Yeah, I mean you probably were afraid of these fighters. Yeah, that's the other the thing. Yeah, I, I knew sure you I had air added... supremacy here. Yeah. Which is why uh, I've been starting to build. Like, I play Eagle, so I typically don't use anti-air because my Air Force just wins. Yeah. But I've been using more anti-air lately, even as Eagle, simply because of how good they are at shutting down enemy fighters and not risking fighters of my own. And more that, than that, even if your air unit are better than others, you want to preserve them as much as you can for your lightning strike because they, they become crazy OP. Well, anything is OP during Lightning Strike. Yeah. Except your novels. <laughs> Please don't make novel as Eagle. So on this turn, I wanted to... I actually built a battleship once. So on this turn, I... <laughs> I wanted to use my uh, superpower. So I tried it to... 
weaken, I try to attack your infantry to get charge, but then I realized infantry isn't going to charge my power bar all that much. <laughs> I know I had some really good attacks over here, but I wouldn't quite finish your units off without a without my super. So I thought I might as well go for the one where I could probably kill without it to get my charge. <laughs> and you get your super. Pop it. <laughs> yes. I was so sad about that. I was like, why? <laughs> you didn't need that. <laughs> I wanted to soften up your anti-air before it hits my bomber. At that point, I realized I should have built a fighter earlier. <laughs> and then I even tried to take down your medium tank with a bunch of infantry. I was rolling my eyes. I was like, no, don't die, medium tank. Just stay alive. <laughs> and my transport copter putting an infantry in capture range of the city because I can. What I feared was happening. <laughs> so I did the right thing to just rush <laughs> your buildings. <laughs> And that's funny because even if uh, we are on your turn, my warbond is still active, so I still earned a bit of money. Thank you very much for that extra money. <laughs> yeah, extra money. It's not a lot, but hey, better this than nothing, right? Yep. You see that 950? Oh my, it's kind of cool, right? It is. Wait, you had 950 and now you're at 30,000? So there were more, uh, but it didn't update it. Uh, so it only updates... The, the war bonds from my turn only updates after. Yeah. So I'd say that's about 2,000. I, that's, you didn't heal anything, I don't think. Yeah. So that's about 2,000 funds. That's two infantry. Yeah, it is. So people, use Warbound more often, please, and tell all these people, Sasha is better than what all of you think. <laughs> I like these 1 HP infantry. <sighs> they don't die, they're like, we are brave. So I, when your Battlecopter moved here, I was thinking, okay, if I could wall break these infantry, <laughs> this fighter can reach down. This fighter can go attack something else, <laughs> and I can still have plenty more forces to attack and win on the bottom as well. You didn't know I had that anti-air lurking around, didn't you? <laughs> I was fine with it. I, I had two fighters. If I lose one, that's fine. Now, at that point, so I need that fighter. Uh, I see Bomber, I'm like, I'm doomed if I don't kill that thing. <laughs> Yeah, and I play very cautiously with my bomber. Yeah, I know. I was never able to kill it. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it went, but at some point it just vanished from the screen. <laughs> That's the idea. Unfortunately, I couldn't quite reach that battle copter, and my fighter was blocked by your 1 HP infantry. <laughs> All to preserve 1 HP infantry. I then wait until they trap something. Well, they didn't trap. I knew something was there, but I I think it was impossible for me to wall break this anyway. Best roadblock ever. The one HP infantry. So, because you left your infantry on uh, these cities, I thought it was just free kills, to be honest. Like, well, I didn't bother putting infantry on my cities because I know I can interrupt it. So I think you kind of just threw away an infantry. Uh, here, to my defense, I wanted you to use unit to kill it, and I wanted to delay as much as I could any capture to my building. And if I just leave it open, I don't delay you that much, and like you will freely use all of your units. Because this all goes back to what I said earlier, the moment you fall behind with Sasha is the moment you lost. And now that me didn't think that is... <laughs> yeah. He pushed his luck I, a bit too much. Yeah. I just moved my uh, bomber up and just sat there. Yeah. That bomber. That bomber. My transport is still doing a lot of work, I would say. That's Blocking. the one from the start of the game, and it's really, it's yeah. it's running low in fuel, so you know it that is. transport paid itself back like 10 times. 
Yes. Uh, I think I built an APC this turn. I don't remember when exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, I wanted to <laughs> save my fighter and my bomber. That's it. Absolutely no one else. Chat APC. Best APC ever. Refuels. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure my APC could make it. Oh, I'm pretty sure your infantry got trapped. It's just not showing on the replay. Yeah, I got trapped into the tank because I, I took a gamble. I was like, maybe, maybe, maybe you can attack from that side. Because well, I think at some my... point, at some point, I was inviting someone else to a game, so I missed like bits of turns. And another uh, I point, see. I was reading my message, so sometimes I was missing parts of games. I see. I thought you got trapped on the uh, transport copter, but it's hard to tell because... I'm pretty sure it's the tank. It only says you got trapped, it doesn't tell me by who. 1 HP. I, I rolled on that one. I built a medium tank uh, <laughs> because I, I, I noticed you were shifting here and I wanted to... I was Shut thinking, what down. if you go for an HQ cap? <laughs> that would lose right away because it would take forever for vehicles to get down there. <laughs> and you still so, had a fighter round, so you didn't give a F about it. So now I went another fighter because I was like, I all, I know you already got two fighter, and I don't know where the F the bomber will go, so I need two fighter to cover the map from that freak <laughs> bomber. Uh, I was worried that of a fighter that just coming to my bomber, so I left my fighter here just yeah. to deter any air attacks. I was never expecting to capture this. I just wanted you to spend your units <laughs> too, so I could get more unit count advantage. Oh! Usually I like to trash mix, but I must admit, you know how to use these. These are like defensive units. That's funny because someone came up to me and told me, what if the mechs were better, like more mobile, they can move further. I'm like, this breaks the purpose of the mech. Mechs yeah. are defensive unit that are there to zone out stuff and like chip something you can finish off or they are there to finish off. So when you, when you add more space to the mech, you just break the purpose of it. That's also why Sammy is very strong because she doesn't give a F and she mm -hmm. breaks the meta of the mech. My transport copter is used to protect this infantry. That guy. That copter. At that point, I knew I lost, but I knew it for like a few turns at that point, but I'm like, it's for content's sake. <laughs> uh, I considered shifting my bomber all the way down here because I was getting a little worried about an HQ cap. I didn't know how many units you actually have, and I knew that, well, well when you're... I actually don't remember. Yeah, oh yeah, I do have vision of this anti-air. So I knew that my fighter would eventually go down. So I built a lander. I wanted to get my vehicles <laughs> in here as quickly as possible. Because if I don't get my vehicles down here, it's entirely possible, maybe not plausible, but possible, that you would go for an HQ cap. The lander yeah. flex is the one flex. When you see it, you lost. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to flex I, I was actually going to use it because vehicles take too long to walk across this river so i want it there right now so you would consider in general in this map to build a ladder when you have the economy for um like regardless of this state like the game in general is it the kind no. of map where you would consider lander in general no i would just keep using the black boat for max okay I will only build a land. Well, I will only use a lander if it's already pre-built for me. 
Okay. But I would Good. typically go with black uh, mix on black boats to deal with vehicles. Yeah, because I'm asking because there's the map, Normandy. You know Normandy, right? Oh, I think I played that. That map uh, is godly awful, and I just wish we had two lander to start off. But regardless, uh, on my first many games on it, I say mini games because it took me a while, but at some point, Mad Blitz, I don't know if you know Blad Mad Blitz. I don't think so, no. He is uh, in the uh, 12 uh, 1200s, so he is really strong. And at some point, he came to me and he told me, let's do Normandy. Usually, I don't do maps I hate. I just do maps like either maps I enjoy or maps that are looking interesting for replays. Then he told me, even good player can learn from uh, Normandy. So because he said that, I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine by me. So we basically played Normandy. And before my game with him, uh, I, I always built a lander so I can front ship faster. So for like one full month before my game with Mad Blitz, I always built my lander because I felt like that was good. And sometimes it was working well because I'm a low ILO player. But then uh, Mad Blitz was like, yeah, it's bad. Don't do that. So I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. And since he told me that, my win rate went much higher. Uh, it's, it's much more... Hard. It's much more complicated to like make it work while on the lander, but my win rate went high. So that's why I'm asking for the lander here. Uh, so in general, it's not a good option, but it was good in your specific case, which is interesting. Yeah, I didn't. Your infantry is uh just one turn's movement from my HQ. So yeah, I, I didn't know that, but I suspected it's. I thought it was possible, so I didn't want to risk it. Yeah, that's good. That's very good to know. And yeah, that's why I wanted to just know your take, because you're really strong. Even if you're like 1198, I think you're you're one of the top players, even if you're not like in the 1400 or something. I think you, based on our game, I, I, I've seen why you're good and why sometimes you roll, you roll your eyes when you see me and that's what you're playing. Well, I was more of doing that as a joke. Like, I wasn't actually rolling my eyes or anything. Oh, okay, that's good. That's good to know. So, what what's your honest opinion? Here, here I like to be honest on my channel. Like, I got two channel, Master Kamba and Multi Topic Talk, and on both channel, I like honesty and honest talk. All How right, bad uh, are we? To be honest. What I think, uh, too many Neo tanks, too many medium tanks, get more battle copters. <laughs> Okay. From someone who says e who plays Eagle. <laughs> That's good to know. And as Eagle, even as Eagle, like as Eagle, I barely make medium tank and near tank. Like sometimes I do, just like one turn before my lightning strike, I'm like I will have that one medium tank that will shoot twice. <laughs> but <laughs> usually I, I, I on lightning strike man spam raycon battle copters, you're in paradise. I like these mechs. Um, but to answer your question as to what I think about you, well, I, I think I answered that already. I just said more Battlecopters. Yeah. Alright, I see you have two fighters <laughs> and a Neo tank. I, wa I have a bomber. I want to bomb the Neo tank, <laughs> but I can't do that as long as your fighters are alive. <laughs> so I did what any person would do. Throw my uh, just <laughs> focus the uh, fighters down and begin capturing this just to be annoying. Like, <laughs> make you waste a unit to attack it. I don't have a choice. I'm Sasha. I need to maintain the small advantage I got. If I don't, I lost. So that was really good. Against a Sasha player, if you can pressure a building, it's great. Even if it's only a distraction, diversion, call it the way you want. It's always really good. The best way to beat a Sasha is deny uh, that Sasha buildings. I say that and I just played a game. I resigned on day 11. Even if I wasn't sure if I was winning or losing, 
I wasn't sure and the guy was really annoying and he denied me building so I just resigned and looking back I was like oh I could have won this if I didn't resign that fast so it's just a sign to say look against Sasha be annoying cap building <laughs> I told everyone her biggest weakness. <laughs> I think you got a very good roll here. With that yeah, that's a very high roll, I confirm. It survived two fighter hits, though. <laughs> These <laughs> fighters are crippled, it's normal. Yeah, and during my power, too. <laughs> So, I, I actually noticed you were shifting here just by that recon. Because <laughs> I realize I'm losing my buildings there, and I'm also losing to freaking make walls. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew I lost at that point, I just kept going for content's sake. Because I think I resigned like in about 2 or 3 turns, I, I, I don't think we reached 30 days. I don't see myself going to 30 days in that state. I think... Uh... I don't remember actually. I think there's another war bond before I resign. I think we did go through 30 days. Really? Uh, oh, I don't remember for sure though. Dear viewer, it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh. Bomb it. I do put it in range of your fighter, I believe. 1, 2, 3, yeah. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah. But I'm fine with it because if you... Oh yeah, there's your war bond. <laughs> the last war bond. And I wanted to move my transport copter here so I can refuel <laughs> it with my APC. But I didn't want your fighter to escape and I sent my infantry to wall block it here to prevent your infantry from breaking through. So it has five fuel left. Rest in peace, transport copter. You did your job well. Yeah, you did your job. I couldn't move my... I, I could have used my infantry, but your infantry could have wall broken that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Poor people. These are my people. They die for a lost cause because we like content. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to save it. But... It was more for my uh, fighter and my bomber because they, I knew they would run out of fuel eventually. I'm not playing as Eagle. <laughs> Even as Eagle, I rarely build APCs because... Well, they just don't lose fuel as much. <laughs> and I got it. <laughs> I was like, I need my meter, I need my war bond. <laughs> <laughs> I want my war bond. And you got your war bond with your anti air. <laughs> I was so sad. I was like, no. Money time. So, I lost one bomber. It's fine. I got my power because of it. So I'm fine with it. <laughs> and I, because of your front shift, I'm actually starting to lose on this side. I consider chasing you. But I already have these two properties, and I'm <laughs> unlikely to get this one, so I just turn my attention south instead. Yeah. My mech's still doing in work. Warbond, the very underrated power Sasha has, and everyone forget about because Market Crash crashed the game. <laughs> <laughs> and it crashed, just like my transport copter poor copter rest in peace copter i know i'm losing here so i decided <laughs> to do a retreat but in order to retreat i have to make sure you don't know where i am so i took out that recon <laughs> as i pulled back poor rico and i ran everyone back resupplied it with an apc <laughs> and just created a makeshift defense here at that units. point i thought i actually flipped the table I was hopeless <laughs> until that turn, but then I see you running away, so I'm like, maybe I'm doing something right. <laughs> but then I started attacking on the bottom. Then I realized, oh no, my bottom is in danger now. Yeah, good. Uh, I noticed you were trying to knock out my mechs to deny me captures. Yeah. 
But I was fine with it because these two transports <laughs> will bring more infantry down very quickly. I can't believe we went to freaking 30 days. I don't believe it. No, I don't think it's 30. I think it was a different game I was thinking about. Yeah, I, I don't see myself going to... More max. <laughs> I think that's the first time I see someone doing good max spam. Max spam is really bad and disgusting at the same time. I but... mostly only do if I know I have a transport ready for it. <laughs> but you did it well, I mean... I have nothing to say in this arena. <laughs> I mean, you have to come to me, so the next will, will just wait for you. Yeah. And it's doing its max job properly. I considered pulling these infantry back, but I kept them there, hoping that you think I have a bigger army ready to counterattack. <laughs> just demoralize. <laughs> I actually, uh, I actually have a game where I should have 100% lost. Uh, I calculated my opponent's next move. He could throw everything in range of my units, but have enough units to wall off my HQ completely. Wow. So I would get first strike on all of his vehicles, like destroy half his army, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because my HQ is being capped. <laughs> I think I will... I think I'm going to uh, do a replay commentary on that game. Oof, that it was turned... Eagle versus Max, so I, so he could definitely have done something. Max is so shitty. I I will never understand why he's tier two. Like, well, in really small maps, I think he can be really strong because of his day to day. But his day to day makes him so hard to play. He's kind of trash. But anyway, that's my take. I don't like Max. That's the worst heal of the game. <laughs> yeah, it was a small map, so uh, I Max was better for that map than Eagle. Like when there's there's choke point and. That's a weak side. I think he can be really, really aggressive. But mm -hmm. even there, I mean. So I killed what I could because mm -hmm. I, I knew my days were numbered and I didn't want to lose too much of my juicy economy. But by that point, I already have a large army waiting. Yeah. And I think after this turn I resign. Because you kept the building after. and you mobbed the floor with my troops down there. So the so only reason why we have similar unit count is Sasha. It's Sasha Warbond and Sasha Day to Day. Because you had a much higher kill death ratio. And that's normal, you're Javier, you got better units than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is normal. So, yeah, the only reason why I, st I stood in the race so long is Sasha. <laughs> That's why she is fun. That's why she is lovely. Sasha forever. I sent my 1 HP fighter just to block your recon in. Okay. <laughs> Not that it would do anything, but I just wanted to uh, <laughs> make a statement to the recon. <laughs> Just trap it entirely <laughs> with my uh, super active so nothing will be broken. <laughs> and this is the part where you resigned. Yeah. So, any final thoughts before we close this one? Uh, no. No. So, that was very fun to play. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, I will leave your channel in the description below in this video. Uh, here again, that was very fun to play. Even if I got demolished, I kind of expected that result. Ah, that, that was still very fun, and thank you again for coming. Uh, is there anything uh, you would like to plug? Keep in mind, this video will be uh, uploaded probably 
like October, maybe November, because I got a lot of videos stacking up. Uh, so October or November, do you have any future project that will be out by that time or that are getting ready for that time? Nope, absolutely nothing. I'm boring. <laughs> no, you're not. You you just don't dedicate that much time, I guess. Uh, what what do you have right now on your channel for any anyone that don't know you? Well, I do some global league replay commentary as well as the ones from my uh, my games in the Egg Cup. I made it to round six before I lost. Well, no, I made it to round seven, but I lost at round seven. So I did win round six. That's good. I think I will lose to round three. Because uh, I do Ola versus Auk, and the guy is just throwing some battleship there. And he has air control and naval control. So I think I will bank on the fact that the guy takes forever to take his turn. So maybe he will run out of time. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe I can flip the table. We will see in the future. But I, I think I will lose by round three. But I, I'm still very happy I made it that far in that cup, to be honest. I say the most important video I have right now is probably the video with the move planner and damage calculator where I showed how I used it to make my turns, where I didn't use it and how it uh, made the situation on my side much worse, including a game I had against Mangs, where I went in, got destroyed, pulled back, <laughs> then move plannered my way back to victory. <laughs> That's good. That's funny because I know that tool. I know how to use it. I just don't like using that kind of tool. And I only do it for Von Bolt and only on games I take seriously. That's why I'm not 1000, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I play Eagle, so of course I have to do it for my super. <laughs> That's cool. Anyway, I hope uh, guys and girl enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe to both of our channel if it's not already done. As I mentioned earlier, Fluffy uh, channel will be in the description below. And I wish you all a great day.